Creeping It Real. I am Judah, and behind me we have a special guest. Pudge the Cat is with me today. Not sure he'll have much to say, but he's here to keep us company. Over the weekend, I watched a horror film called uh, Curse of the Demon. It was created, filmed back in 1957, so it's definitely a black and white film. And I have no problem which, with watching black and white films. I, I had a uh, roommate who refused to watch black and white. It's, he's, he was an older, a uh, few years older than me, and a uh, few years, maybe, maybe like six years older than me. And the guy just couldn't handle it. He just, his attention span, for some reason, when something was in black and white, he, he couldn't handle it. But I'm a big fan of the classics. I love Cary Grant. He has some of the greatest, in my personal opinion, classic films out there. Very funny. Uh, so here is, here is Curse of the Demon right here. The original title was Night of the Demon, but I'm going to keep calling it Curse of the Demon because Night of the Demon was also the title of an 80s horror film. Let's just uh, check out this trailer. And we'll get started. It has been written since the beginning of time that evil supernatural creatures exist in a world of darkness. And it is also said man can call forth these powers of darkness, the demons of hell. <laughs> Is the night of the demon. <laughs> and tonight is yeah, the that's night how my that roommate would have responded if I asked him to watch a black white movie. Defies the mysterious murderous devil cult in a desperate battle against the demons of hell. Oh, why did you drop the poker? It's red hot. You didn't, you know. Oh, my boy, you're as pale as death. There was something in here. He has been chosen. I've been chosen for what? What do you mean? Today I found all the pages of my desk calendar torn out after October the 22nd. I know why. He died on the 22nd. John, what's the matter? The same thing happened to my desk calendar after the 28th. The frightened girl. The master of witchcraft. You will die as I said. At 10 o'clock on the 28th of this month. Your time allowed is just three days from now. Skeptical? Don't make up your mind till you see this masterpiece of macabre magic. Because, after all, evil supernatural creatures really do exist. <laughs> Okay, that was the first time I watched that trailer, and honestly, it shows it shows it shows every scene with the demon. Uh, the only reason I watched the movie in the first place, if you if you watch Craven at Real uh, at all, which I would be surprised, but if you have, you'd probably heard me say several times I love practical effects. Now, I had never heard of this movie movie before until I started uh, on YouTube watching a channel called Creature Features, uh, which is actually a syndicated show, kind of like Sven Gulli and uh, Elvira. So I started watching a few episodes that they had posted on YouTube, and then Curse of the Demon started getting put in my feed, and uh, the thumbnail was the photo of that demon, and it really, I was like, oh, this looks cool. I got to check this out, especially because of my love of practical effects and uh, it being from that time period, I really wanted to see what they did. I have to tell you, I was super impressed. It didn't seem like there was just like one point of articulation. It wasn't just like gah, 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 in the mouth. The lips moved, the nose moved, it was slobbery looking. I was really impressed. 
and to know that they actually built that thing and that was not computer graphics at all somebody really spent a whole lot of time crafting that and i appreciate that kind of a thing but that that trailer um really <laughs> showed everything i also was impressed with the footprints uh in the ground and yes it's a simple thing i know it but i appreciated even how it, it, it wasn't like suddenly there's flat ground and then suddenly it was all in. It was like it, it slowly moved in and went back to the front, like if something was putting its heel down and stepping down. I appreciated that and the steam coming up as if it was some kind of a demonic force, you know. So I liked it. Now, uh, on a whole, this is a very typical horror movie from that time. Uh, usually it would be like a movie would start out you are aware that there is some kind of a monster, but they won't show it at all. And then you have to wait through like an hour of trudging along and finding dead bodies, never seeing anything. You At the end of the movie, you're like, I wish I could have seen more of the monster. What they did here, and I appreciated it, is they showed you the monster within like the first 10 minutes, maybe shorter. Uh, but then... You don't see it at all throughout the rest of the movie until the end when you see almost, which is reused footage, but they, they also add some more. I, I enjoyed the movie. It, it kept my attention. It, it focuses on a, uh, a professor that's a skeptic of the supernatural, and he's going to do an investigation into this guy that is like the head of this cult. And he doesn't like it, so he puts a curse on him. And then the, the skeptic starts experiencing things that like, oh, maybe this, there's more to this than what I thought. And so he goes to this cult leader and he's like, please call it off. Uh, you know, I'll do anything. I'll, I'll write an apology. I'll say I was wrong and everything. But it, it was too late and he gets killed by this demon. Uh, at the same time in this investigation, there's another guy that was flying over from uh, America to help in this uh, investigation. He gets there to meet this professor. The professor is dead. Professor's daughter uh, or niece, I can't remember, meets him, and they continue the investigation. Uh, then the same somewhat fate befalls this guy. He, the cult leader is pissed off that he's going to continue this investigation. He puts the same curse on him, which is like this piece of parchment paper that has ruins on it. And as the story goes, if you're given this piece of paper with ruins on it, then in three days, this demon's going to come and kill you. Uh, you find out throughout the movie that the only way to reverse this is to get that parchment with those ruins back to the original person who gave it to you. But when you find the parchment and you look at it, it somehow has a life of its own and it desires to escape from you and destroy itself. So you can't return it to the person who gave it to you. Uh, lucky enough for this U.S. guy, um, when this parchment tries to escape him and tries to fly into a fire, there's like a, a cage in front of it. So it can't reach the fire. It just hits the fire and he's able to grab it and he saves it. So hooray for him. The acting was plausible to me. I didn't feel like it was overacted. It's very typical of the 50s styles acting, but, but I'm okay with that. Um, they only show the demon at the front, they show it at the end, and the rest of it is just this skeptic working his way through, still not believing the whole time until he gets to a point where he's like, okay, I should take this serious. Finds out he has to return that parchment Oh, one thing I wanted to notice, I, I wanted to know, one thing I wanted to point out is in that trailer, they showed Stonehenge. In the movie, he goes up to Stonehenge and he has that parchment paper with the runes on it. And then they show a stone at Stonehenge that has runes marked into it. I've never been to Stonehenge, but from my memory of when I was interested and was reading about it, I, I don't think there are any markings on Stonehenge, uh, but obviously they're taking some kind of creative license to try to connect this whole thing to druids and uh, demon worship or whatever. They're, they're trying to give it more validity, but 
I'm pretty sure that if you look that up, you're going to find that there aren't any writings on any of the stones uh, at Stonehenge. That was just something that stuck out to me. I, whatever. Uh, so at the end, uh, after our American guy realizes that he has to return that parchment to the cult leader to escape death, uh, the cult leader has booked himself a train, and he's trying to get out of there. And he wants to be gone before that American has a chance to try to give him back the parchment. But the American catches on somehow, and he gets on the train as it's taken off, you know, jumps in there. And he finds him, and the cult leader, what I appreciated is he was, he was playing it very smart. He refused. The American guy was like, oh, you, you got a cigarette, and he gives it to him. And he's like, got a light, and he hands him a pack of matches, and he lights it, and he tries to give the pack of matches back to the cult leader, and the cult leader's like, no, 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 you can keep them, because he's refusing to receive anything from this guy because he doesn't want to get that parchment given back to him. So he keeps refusing to be touched by this guy. Somehow there are some police that see this American get on this train and they follow him to where the cult leader is at and they suspect this uh, American up to some nefarious things. They, they break in. And they're like, oh, you got to come with us. Stop bothering this man. And the cult leader's like, yeah, I don't know. He's, he's in here trying to accuse me of stuff. And I, I, I just want out of here. And he, he's leaving. And the American's like, oh, well, don't forget your book. And, and the cult leader's like, nope, nope, not my book. And he, he's refusing to take anything from him still. But then the American starts getting these cops involved. And he's like, well, these are his bags, and, and this is his coat. And they're like, hey, yeah, yeah, you don't want to forget your bag and coat. So at that point, the cult leader, instead of sticking with his, I'm not taking anything and running, he suddenly becomes stupid. And he's like, oh, yeah, and he just grabs his coat and stuff, which obviously the parchment got stuck in his coat. Uh, he takes it back. He grabs the coat, and he's all like, oh, what did I do? And that that was a little like, why was he so smart and then suddenly turned into a ding dong and uh, he finds the parchment and obviously the parchment as soon as he touches it he's like oh gotta get away and then it flies away and so forth whatever i did like this movie it's difficult to rate it though uh based off um hmm, would i watch it again i wouldn't because i simply watched it for the sake of seeing those practical effects which i really did enjoy I think at best I can still, and I've been given this rating a lot recently based on we're doing the one to 10. I'm giving it a six. Most of what I've been watching is just like what I feel is just average. I, I'm not sure that I would uh, suggest to anybody. I did after watching this, when I came in, I told Jake about it and I didn't necessarily tell him, Hey, you need to watch this movie. It was more so, Hey, I watched this movie, the practical effects. I really dug it. I just appreciate you know, what people were doing back then to create these kind of things. Now, what <laughs> is really interesting to me is I watched this movie specifically for those practical effects. But if you go to like IMDb and you kind of check out things that say uh, trivia. I'll show you this here. Okay, you see this top part? <clears throat> Let me get that closer. This is the director. I don't know how to pronounce his name, so I'm going to attempt it, and then you can all laugh. I'm going to say Jacques Tornor? Tornier? I don't know. Anyway, that's the director. It says that he never planned to show the monster, but to leave it, instead to the audience imagination. However, the studio insisted that the monster be shown and added it in post-production, allegedly without Horner's consent, approval, or involvement. So it's funny to me. The only reason I watched it was for that demon, actually seeing that demon. And he wanted to leave it to what I think is like 
the um, hmm, the fallback for most of those types uh, of movies in that time period simply because of the lack of being able to create the, the visuals. They usually left it up to the uh, viewer's imagination. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, point in case is there is a, a film called The Haunting. It has Liam Neeson in it, uh, Owen Wilson, um, several others. I can't remember their names. Catherine Zeta-Jones. Um, anyway, that was a remake of an older movie called The Haunting. I watched the, uh, the one with Liam Neeson. I really enjoyed it. I thought the special effects were okay. If I rewatched it, it might seem super dated. But I, I enjoyed it. I, I watched it during a time in my life that I was not a horror movie fan. And so I was surprised that I enjoyed it. I went and I saw it with some friends. That's why I ended up seeing it. But because I liked it, I was interested in seeing the original. So I rented the original, a black and white film that does not show at all what the remake does. It was all left to my imagination, and I was terrified of this movie. I stopped watching it. I had to shut it off. That's how scared I was. I, I'm thinking now that I've become a seasoned horror fan that if I rewatched the original, it would not affect me the way that it did. But at that time, I had no experience within the horror genre, and so it really got me. Now, there is an argument, and I can totally see this and understand it. If you're somebody who wants to not present a, a definite, there is a spiritual realm, or there isn't, I could understand you wanting to leave it to the audience based off their viewing, whether or not they walk away with thinking it was real or not. So if you, if you didn't show the demon, you could walk away thinking, well, these people were just having psychological breaks and they weren't really seeing anything. It was just all in their mind. It was from suggestion or hypnosis and the cult leader was all full of baloney the whole time. And, and I see, see that being a way to go. But being the fan of practical effects that I am, I am glad they went the way that they, they went. Though with there actually being a demon in there, it definitely uh, makes, I was going to say, it, le it makes the, uh, the cult leader less uh, vilified, which is a lie because he's literally sicking a demon on people and killing them. So he's still a villain, but it, it still like uh, gives him a uh, Credence, I guess it, it basically is saying, yeah, he's a, he's a jerk, but he's right. Um, which is fine. I'll accept that. <laughs> I'll accept that based on the fact that I got some, what I feel are some amazing practical effects. I'm not sure if there's really anything else to talk about with this movie. Uh, this was not that it really matters, but this was, the screenshot that I saw that attracted me when I saw that, I was just like, I, I, I got to give this thing. I got to give this thing a try. Apparently it has become now a uh, cult classic. Like a lot of people will uh, mention this as being uh, one of their favorite movies or uh, very um, instrumental in their filmmaking career. Oh, what? Oh, check this out. This is so weird. So when I was looking up the director, again, my apologies, Jacquees Turner, Turner, I don't know. Look at this. Okay, so yeah, this is his IMDb page. If you see up here, it says that he was born in Paris in 1904. Oh, and it says here he died 1977. Okay. That clears things up. That's really, that's really weird. Okay, he was born in 90, 1904 and died in 1977. Uh, December 1977, okay. But then if you look down here and what are his projects, you see right here, he directed, do you see the year here? 
2009. He directed two episodes in 2009. So apparently they consulted his spirit, and from the grave, he helped direct this. Um, so I don't really know what to say about this other than this page is faulty or there's some kind of story behind this that I don't entirely understand. If anybody out there understands what's going on there, let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts about Curse of the Demon. Uh, do you prefer Night of the Demon or Curse of the Demon as far as the title goes? Do you like practical effects or do you prefer these uh, big, huge things like Disney where they pump out these uh, CG finanzas that really are lacking and you can tell that they're not putting a lot of heart and effort into it or do you prefer the things that obviously time and effort and a trade had to go into oh and I, let me okay let me just back it up a little bit there's a slight insult there saying that people who do the cg it's it's not art and it's not a trade my apologies it is art my frustration comes with people like Disney who don't care about the art. They just want to get the product out. And so therefore the art suffers because they just want to get the product out. And then they end up pushing out this garbage CG effects and they have enough money. Disney has enough money to make good effects, but they're not willing to pay the artist the money they deserve or give them the time they need to make that. And so they push out subpar things, in my opinion. There's been a massive downgrade in things that have come out of Disney recently in the last few years. Uh, from writing to the CG, all of it, man. It's, it's been bad news. Curse of the Demon, I enjoyed it. I won't watch it again. For horror fans that have never seen it, I would suggest it. For those who uh, maybe are cinema uh, history buffs, I would suggest watching it uh, just to, to look at it and uh, be amazed at the things that they did when, when they were not leaning on the imagination of the viewer and actually trying to present something, the uh, massive amount of creativity that would go into that to make that look plausible and presentable top notch on that on that effort i would give this a nine but re-watching and enjoyability uh more than just one watch i'm gonna have to stick with six which is just an average movie from my perspective i would love it if you guys would leave a comment a like subscribe share if you have a suggestion of an older movie that i should check out even if i've already seen it if you want me to check it out and talk about it with you I would love to hear that. Uh, I don't think I'm ever going to be able to watch a movie like this with, with Jacob and Gabe. Um, however, uh, coming up, I'm going to have a guest, uh, Scott, who is going to be reviewing the Abominable Dr. Fives with me, which isn't a film from the 50s, but it is from the 70s and uh that fits within you know closely with that type of thing so uh if you could you know check back later and uh view that and again if you have any suggestions please send them my way like subscribe and share and this is judah on creeping real see you later